It's easy to tell when the gel is set because it goes slightly opaque. You can then load the samples onto the gel. Firstly, you need to remove the tape or sealing ends if you've used them from the gel tray. Place the gel, still in the tray, into the gel tank. You'll need running buffer at the same concentration that you used to make the gel. If you used 1 times TBE in the gel, then use 1 times TBE running buffer. If you use 0.5 times TBE to make up the gel, then use 0.5 times TBE running buffer. TAE buffer gives better resolution of fragments greater than 4000 base pairs and TBE gives better resolution of 100 to 3000 base pair fragments. To load the gel you will need a loading solution with a die in it to make the samples heavier when you load them so that they sink into the well. The die is there to indicate how far the DNA has travelled so you don't lose the samples at the other end of the gel. Two kinds of loading dye are usually used, blue and orange. The blue dyes are xylene cyanol and bromophenol blue. The xylene cyanol dye runs at about 4000 base pairs in a 1% gel, but this varies with gel concentration. Bromophenol blue is smaller in size and runs at about 300 base pairs in a 1% gel. Orange G runs right at the front at around 50 base pairs. The precise amount of dye is not important. Use about a 1 to 5 ratio with each sample. However, it is important that you don't have overlap of your dye and expected DNA size. For example, if you are expecting a band of 200 to 400 base pairs, you shouldn't use bromophenol blue as it will run at the same pace and obscure your product. In this case, you should use a larger dye like xylene cyanol. Pour the one times buffer into the gel tank to cover the gel by a few millimetres. You can load your gel from tubes or from parafilm, depending on the dye you use. Add the required amount of loading dye to your PCR tube, 1 microliter for 5 microliters of PCR reaction, or 5 microliters for 50 microliter PCR reaction, depending on the concentration of the PCR. You cannot always judge this perfectly in the first instance and may need to run another gel with an adjusted amount if you want a really good picture. Today we're going to use 1 microliter of loading buffer and 3 microliters of PCR product. For each of the samples, combine the dye and PCR product in a tube. Vortex and spin down or just carefully pipette up and down, it's just as good. Now make up two lots of size standard. Today, we will use a 1kb ladder. To make enough for two wells, combine 1 microliter of loading buffer and 3 microliters of size standard. Carefully load 2 microliters of the size standard into the first well, taking care not to pierce the bottom of the well with the pipette tip. Keep the tip of the pipette just above the bottom of the well, then load the samples into the next wells of the gel. Make sure you know which order they are in. Don't load your samples too fast or they will shoot out of the well and try not to pipette bubbles into the well as you will lose some of your sample. Finally, load the next aliquot of your size standard. It's good practice to have a size standard every few lanes in the gel if you want to accurately size your fragments. When you finish loading, put the lid on the gel setup. Remember that DNA is negatively charged and will travel towards the positive or red electrode. Double check that the orientation of the gel and electrodes is correct. Connect the leads to the power supply. Gels should not be run faster than 5 volts per centimeter. If you take the distance between the electrodes in centimeters and multiply by 5, this is the maximum voltage. If gels run too fast, they will heat up and could melt. Hotter running gels won't resolve as well. Turn on the power supply and set the voltage. Small gels run typically at 50 to 70 volts. Larger gels can be run at 80 to 100 volts. You can check the current by changing the volt amp switch to amp. There can be voltage but no current if there is a break in the circuit. Current is typically around half the voltage if your buffer concentration is correct. You now need to let the gel run and check it periodically. 
Gels often start running fairly slowly, but then speed up as the temperature warms up. The distance the DNA has migrated in the gel can be judged visually by monitoring the migration of the tracking dyes. When adequate migration has occurred, switch off the power and remove the gel tray. To visualise your DNA, place the gel on an ultraviolet transilluminator, sometimes called an ultraviolet light box. This is used to see ethidium bromide stained DNA in gels. Remember, if no protection is available with the equipment, Always wear protective eyewear when observing DNA on a transilluminator to prevent damage to the eyes from the UV light. Also be aware that DNA will diffuse within the gel over time. An examination or photography should take place shortly after you stop the electrophoresis. Once photographed, the bands on your gel can now be analysed and compared with your known size standard. Today we have used a 1KB ladder. If your gel has run correctly, the size standard bands will have run at the same place in the gel. You can judge the size of your PCR products by imagining a horizontal line joining the bands on the markers. Then estimate the size of your products against the closest band in your size marker. If you would prefer, you can stain your gels after they have run. Ethidium bromide is positively charged and runs in the opposite direction to the DNA. If your DNA runs past the ethidium bromide front, Post staining will bring out the DNA bands again. To post stain, add ethidium bromide to running buffer to 0.5 micrograms per mil and stain the gel for half an hour. Today we've used ethidium bromide, but other stains are commonly used, including cyber green and other intercalators. There are important safety issues to consider when using ethidium bromide. It is a mutagen that intercalates and binds the DNA in your PCR product. It is best to assume that everything to do with running gels is contaminated with ethidium bromide. This includes gel equipment and anything in the room used to prepare gels, including the sink, cabinets, microwave and also the camera system. Always wear gloves in the gel preparation area and wear a lab coat to protect your clothes. Do not touch the rest of the lab with contaminated gloves. Remove gloves immediately when finished and wash your hands. Thank you.